let's start this video with something that really bothers me, and maybe you've noticed it too. Tier 1 Hunter, Lamat Carbine. Normal. Tier 2 Hunter. Again, fine. You can hold it that way. Why is it then that with Tier 3 or Legendaries, you become the sassiest hunter in the bayou? I straight up look like I want to talk to your manager, because I do, Crytek. I do want to talk to your manager to rectify this. Okay, fine. Maybe I am a little sassy. Have I taken a page from Hollywood? Am I just doing sequels now? No, not quite. The truth is, I've done a Lamat video in the past, but that first one is kind of weird. So I'm hoping to pull a Dark Knight and right the wrongs of the original that had a questionable plot about a descent into madness. Also, keeping with the metaphor, I'm gonna pray to God a third movie isn't necessary. The Lamat Carbine is the grown-up version of the Lamat Pistol. It still has the 9-round cylinder and a secondary shotgun attachment, but now features a stock and longer barrel, increasing its damage to 107 at about 20 meters, and its headshot range to 140 meters with base ammo. At $130, the Lamat Carbine is priced as a sort of middle ground between the Winfield and the Nagant Carbine, but that doesn't mean it has middling performance. In a way, this gun is a lot like Hannah Montana, its best of both worlds characteristics prop it up for success. I've seen my demographics, I know what y'all are into. But before we talk about the performance, let's talk about that custom ammo. The Lamat Carbine has two custom ammo types, or, well, I guess five custom ammo types. The Carbine portion, that is the top part, has FMJ and Incendiary. FMJ increases the Lamat Carbine's damage over distance, setting the effective headshot range to 178 meters. FMJ also increases the bullet's penetration, which can lead to surprising kills like this one. The world is southeast. Bookie, did you see that? I didn't. I oh just my out god. What Incendiary ammo is the same as base ammo, but it loses its penetration and glows while it flies. And although it can be a mild annoyance to your foes, it is traditionally a PvE ammo. You can take it, but it really doesn't add that much performance to the carbine. The Lamat Carbine Shotgun has three custom ammos, but first, let's talk about that base ammo. It has a medium barrel length, meaning the spread of its pellets falls somewhere in the middle of all the shotguns, probably best compared to a full-length Caldwell rival. As with other shotguns, the custom ammo you choose can greatly alter how this undermount weapon performs. Dragon Breath ammo can light targets on fire at a pretty decent range, and although it is usually considered a PvE ammo, you can get kills with it. Slugs fire a single large projectile, but keep in mind, the store stat is a little wrong at the moment, saying the slugs match long barrel ammo, but that isn't the case. Lamat slugs should be used at Caldwell rival distances, which is about 5 meters closer, not Romero distances. Still though, slugs are a great opportunity for one hit kills and have a further lethal range than the base buckshot on a full health hunter. Lastly, we have Starshell ammo, which is about as useless as the Confederate government. Oh, a collection of states that just seceded from a central federal government don't want to be told what to do. Go figure. Also, this random dig at the Confederacy makes more sense if you've seen the first video. I don't blame you if you haven't. Starshell can be used to burn through AI enemies, hive swarms, and ignite barrels. Starshell isn't horrible, it just kind of handicaps what can be a useful secondary option for the Lomat. I imagine most people are going to prefer slugs, but for my own preferences, adding $65 to the cost doesn't seem worth it, and Buckshot does enough for my needs. Speaking of my needs, love is in the air. And just like your loving parents, I too have certain needs. Companionship, support, stability, intimacy. I was thinking recently how many YouTube channels I still follow. I subscribed to over a decade ago, and it's weird to think about, but also kind of sweet that they have been a small part of my life. So I'm going to skip the grandiose protestation of love and instead ask if you want to grow old together by subscribing to this channel. No intimacy required. Isn't that sweet? <clears throat> Unlike the Lamat pistol, which can be fanned, the Lamat carbine does not benefit from any traits, but really, it doesn't need them. 
The iron sight is friendly to headshots, though maybe not quite as pointy as the pistol version, and with the addition of the stock, the Lamac carbine also fires a bit faster than the pistol version, meaning you can be a little sloppy while you shoot through those 9 rounds and still end up with a kill. Nope. Nope. There we go. In contrast to my debilitating anxiety, the Lamac carbine allows me to feel secure regardless of where I am. Outside in the open air, the carbine is handy enough to pluck a cheeky headshot. Inside, where CQB is imminent, the shotgun will usually suffice, even if you only have one shot to make it work. I think fans of the Lamac carbine appreciate this freedom most of all, and it's something that keeps me coming back to it, especially on a fresh hunter with few traits. Really, Lamac Carbine, I wish I knew how to quit you. Speaking of Brokeback Mountain though, it seems at the time of writing this video, the Lamat's iron sight is slightly misaligned. The bullet fires a little bit higher than the tip of its mountainous post, and this is most noticeable at range. Also, the base compact ammo is pretty underwhelming at a distance and has the usual steep damage drop off you've come to expect from compact ammo. FMJ does help and it certainly is my preferred ammo type, but people looking for a faster muzzle velocity will be eyeing the high velocity ammo on the Nagat Carbine or the Winfield. Also, because the effective range of the firing modes is so different, it is especially annoying with a Lamat if you forget to switch off your shotgun for a distant shot. Uh, I, <laughs> I didn't realize I had a shotgun. <laughs> Oh, it's just me doing that? Okay, cool. And finally, another thing you should be mindful of is its reload, because 19 seconds from empty is a long time in a gunfight. Suffice it to say, the Lamac Carbine isn't perfect, nor the best at any specific thing, but its unmatched versatility, especially without traits, is its own niche. So, that being said, what should you pair with it? The Lamac Carbine has 27 bullets and 6 shotgun shells total, which isn't terrible, so you could bring whatever secondary you are most comfortable with. The Spitfire is a great all-rounder, no traits required. If you take Dragon Breath ammo, the Sparks Pistol might be able to finish off a Hunter with charred health. And while no one really likes it when you bring your annoying kid to work, bringing the Lamat pistol is a great way to boost both your shotgun and FMJ ammo, and you can lean on it in a pinch. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Slugged him. In summary, the Lamat Carbine can be taken anywhere and still compete. No, it isn't a flashy long ammo weapon, and no, it isn't the strongest, but just like most weapons in the game, people that don't enjoy the Lamat Carbine probably just don't get it. The Lamat is useful in most fighting distances and allows hunters to switch ranges on the fly. The right to choose is one of America's fundamental liberties, and I'm happy to say the Lamat embodies that entirely, especially in an ambush where you never really know what the distance is going to be. I want to deal with him while we engage these guys. Let's find get my heals. I'm not blasting. They're around there. He's dead. He's dead. There we go. That was so quick. 